Welcome back, everybody. I think time is now close to 10 minutes past 10. And Janne? Yes, that's right. Yep. So let us continue with the agenda. So uh, the next part will be the XMind prototype in the mining value chain. I will give a short introduction and then we will have uh, presentations from uh, sorry from Rikal Bergqvist, Ronald Arvidsson, Pekka Kilpelän and Jasek Kolaj. Um, and uh, just as a reminder, this is the how it goes uh, in, in the XMind project. We have the sensor development and the sensors uh, have been integrated into the prototypes. And uh, at the same time, we had the 3D geomodeling uh, part going on and everything uh, comes together in the pilot at the four, four mines. And these are the XMind prototypes. We have the sensor testing platform at VTT, where we have tested the 3D camera and, uh, and the XRT camera and also a little bit the XRF spectrometer and the data fusion of the different sensors and so on. Then we have the drill core analyzer and the containerized sorting prototype and the COMEX research facility where also a lot of testing for the mineral sorting application has taken place during the project. Okay, the speakers in this uh, session or part include Mikael Bergqvist again, CTO of Orixpor. And then we have uh, Ronald Arvidsson, who works as a senior geophysicist at uh, SGU in Sweden. And Pekka Kilpeläinen, who works as a senior scientist at VTT. And Jase Kolatz, who is the CEO of the COMEX company in, in Poland. So our next speaker will be Michael Bergqvist from Orexplorer, and he will tell you about the real core scanner prototype developed in the XMine project. So Michael, please. Hello again. I will um, start here and um, So yep. you see the presentation. Yep. And not, Working not, yeah. Fine. So this time we will go through the, the drill core analyzer. And um, it's um, the, this is, as you all are, are aware of now, the final event for this project, the XMind project, that also includes the industrial workshop. Uh, with Azrael Medit and Azrael Medit will later on in the afternoon also tell about the uh, the usage when when they have put this this uh, machine to use at their location. So this is as we saw before the break uh, our current project, and uh, as we. We uh, mentioned that at that uh, or discussed that, that during that time, it's targeting base metals as its uh, current incarnation. If you just use the system as it is, and this is what has been put to use uh, at four mine sites um, over the X mine project. So both um, Lovisa Gruvan mine in uh, in Bergslagen in Sweden and uh, Hellas Gold in Greece, Nasserel Meret in uh, Bulgaria, and uh, Hellenic Copper Mines in Cyprus. And uh, Hel it, at Hellenic Copper Mines, they are still uh, scanning uh, with the machine. And on the other sides, uh, they have uh, finalized their campaigns. So the technology, if you go through it a little bit, bit more in detail now during this session, 
it is a combination of X-ray tomography uh, produced by the transmission X-rays and the X-ray fluorescence produced by the excitation of, of atoms in the drill core. So uh, these are X-rays that, that do not go through and, and hit the camera on the other side, but instead they emit radiation when they are hit by the X-rays that are impinging upon the surface and also on the inner part of the drill core. And we combine this with a mass measurement and then we are using uh, internally, we are using um, minerals and sets of minerals as building blocks to model the material. The system in a schematic overview is uh, um, using a, uh, you, you heard me mentioning before in the in the session about the spectrometer. Um, this, it's the same semiconductor material that is used in the transmission camera. It's a cadmium telluride based uh, camera. And uh, this is because cadmium telluride has a high stopping power, as we say. It's uh, really uh, is efficient in uh, in stopping the gamma rays that come through through the from the x-ray source through the drill core and into the uh, camera detector and in in essence then it's counting every photon that hits it, the camera which makes it very efficient and also fast and also giving low noise uh, there are one or many X-ray spectrometers that measures the X-ray fluorescence. And we are using a small spot X-ray source with uh, quite high energy as its uh, highest energy compared to uh, many other systems that use um, XRF in uh, measuring on, on drill cores. And that the reason for that is is we need to go through the material and we we want to excite atoms also at the inner part of the drill core. So Geocore X10 on site, you will hear more about it. Here is an example from the Lovisa mine where we uh, actually in the beginning when it was delivered uh, to the Lovisa mine, it was put down into the mine itself underground. Uh, both to show that this is possible to do and also um, to to uh, see that it really it really worked from our side. But later on it was moved to the surface in a core shed in a central location and this is what what we see that that people are interested in in this technology and using it at, in their mines or mine sites. They want to have it centrally so they can use it for for uh, not only one, campaign. If it is uh, needed to be in protection or temperature regulated environment uh, outside in the, in the bush as has been in, for instance, Australia, uh, we put it in a container with air condition. And uh, in, in a remote location in Sweden, it would be a container with uh, heating in the, in the winter. So, and, and that is Having said that, so like in Greece, it just stands uh, underneath a, a roof. It doesn't need walls on that location, actually. So working with the Joker X10, continuing here is um, here you see Jan Erik from uh, Lovisa uh, Gruvan during the project here, uh, scanning with the Joker X10. And um, the way it works is uh, exploration um, drills with a tubular drill that produces a core. Uh, and this is the drill core that we are talking about. This is put in boxes and uh, the, the, these have re red lines on them because during the project here we have used uh, oriented drill core so we know actually how these were located and site and, and um, how they were sitting in the rock itself before they were taken out. And then we put them back at almost uh, precisely together and then into the the uh, uh, sample holders and put them into the machine and the machine will then uh, keep track of the orientation 
and it will know how it has ro rotated the sample holder and keep track on this also inside our visualization and annotation tool called uh, Workspore Insight that we have developed. Uh, we claim that you get more knowledge from continuous data set than from sampling. And this goes for geological structures, geochemistry, particle sizes, their distributions and forms, uh, the density of the drill cores, and also geotechnical data sets that we will see that is now possible to, to retrieve and extract. We have a, a software that's called the War Explorer Insight um, uh, that is used for annotations and for overview and for handling these drill projects, also data export and, and visualization. And here is an example of uh, using the uh, already scanned data, getting the three-dimensional tomographic imagery out, and now um, selecting something here that is uh, uh, some uh, planar two-dimensional structure and annotating it and uh, It, it seems we lost you, Mikael. Um, I think the video was too heavy. So, Janne or Maria, do you have contact with Mikael? Not at the moment. If Mikael can hear, maybe you can try to switch off the video or or get out of the meeting and come back. Maybe it helps. Give you a few seconds if you can reconnect. Meanwhile, um, Ronald, can you be prepared just in case we don't can reconnect with Mikael here? Uh, we give him a couple of minutes. So just be prepared. I'm ready. Yeah. So Mikael, do we have contact with you? It seems that Mikael is not connected at the moment. I think we hand over to Ronald instead, and then we'll return to Mikael as soon as he has rejoined. Oh, okay, here he comes. So Mikael. Um, so the the. Uh, okay. So Ronald, you can relax a few more minutes, and uh, Mikael, will, you can. Yeah return but don't start the video again that was too heavy apparently so i will i will go from the the, the next slide i will just um, share my my uh, desktop again so it it was actually the uh, the uh, video conference tool that crashed this time so i was just thrown out so i, I will go back and sharing the desktop here and uh, and present and I will put myself here on the next slide. And um, uh, start the presentation. So here is no video now, and I hope you can see me. We can see next image. Yes, please. Yeah. So I assume that you didn't see this one. It it is now about handling and managing the structures that we annotated and we marked up before. So 
Here we see uh, a couple of linear linear structures annotated with the details of uh, alpha and beta angles. And as we will see later, I, I can just mention it here, we now also have the possibility of using the color data, the color orientation instead of the, the um, relative orientation that we have here. So this is also an improvement that has been done throughout the, this project, over this project. Uh, we see the concentrations of the chemical elements and a map of those over the whole. Um, the the, the uh, image you see on the left is a, is a schematic view of the drill hole, and you can zoom out even if it's 1,000 meters, you will be able to see uh, the whole hole and its uh, continuous variations of concentrations that you see there with the diagram. And also with the concentration map, you see a grayscale map of, of the concentrations for the various elements that we can we can detect. Uh, we also have the possibility to watch the uh, or have a look and uh, later export if we will if we like the density variation. Uh, we have both the measured variation of the density and the uh, uh, implied variation of, of the density, which is uh, building upon our uh, model of the inner part of the core in terms of uh, the minerals that are there. So the composition that actually then results in the, the elements that we see. And then you can see that um, uh, there is uh, there are hints of things happening. So uh, we have the measured part is um, is the straight lines and the the uh, dipping part here that is going down quite low in in, in density is uh, actually a, a quartz vein. And you have three minutes to go, Michael. Yes, we have other parts that we that we. Uh, can extract and that is now something that has become very interesting not only for mines but also for, for infrastructure projects and that is rock quality designation and other rock mechanics parts that we can extract. So there is an automatic uh, rejoining of pieces inside this piece, this part of the software uh, and it, you can see the correlation between core photos here and also the, the pieces inside this uh, rock mechanics uh, part of the system where you can extract uh, the orientation of the core pieces the assembly that is done automatically in the in the software and then also the stereo net plotting of the, these directions of in this case the joints there are constant improvement improvements being um, uh, achieved and and uh, performed throughout the project because of the interactions with the technical partners and the users and the, the geological institutes and universities. So all this has delivered a lot of input and the feedback and uh, we are now using higher power than on the onset of the project. We have better image resolution. We have widened the elemental range in, uh, sensitivity for aluminium to, to potassium with a new soft X-ray addition. We are now measuring and presenting density. We have a faster scan time of six meters per hour compared to four before. We now have core photo presentation and we use color coordinates if so liked, and we present stereo net diagrams and particles can be handled. I will just end with something that will go be, be more deeply uh, dealt with, the workflow. So drilling, um, extracting the, these uh, 3D models, uh, finding the geochemical and structural data, doing the well correlation, and then the 3D de uh, deposit model in whatever software the geologist on site is using, and then back to uh, drilling and uh, new data sets, and this uh, continues until uh, you have de developed your, your model in detail. So that's my presentation. Mm. And Thanks I thank you. Much, you. And uh, we take questions later, I think so, Stefan. Yeah. Isn't it so? Uh, we have a number of questions that have appeared in the chat, and you can read them out for yourself and prepare your answers. And we'll take them in the next break in the summer and discussion that we'll have about a quarter past 11. So thank okay. you very much, thank Mikael. You. And um, now we return to Ronald.
and uh, you are starting up. Excellent. I can see the preview. Now I see myself. And I see your preview of the presentation. And now you see the first slide and the second slide. Uh, it's uh, sorry, I have to pull out on screen. I see your first slide, but I also see the slides on the left. I see you starting the presentation again. Yes. Uh, uh, do you see the full screen? No, now? I see the full screen and I hear you loud and clear. Very good. Welcome. OK. Uh, I will talk about how we, the data that we use in the applications as uh, Earth scientists. And behind me, I have a quite a huge crew uh, from or explore geological survey of Romania, all of the mines, and uh, quite a number of people from geological survey of Sweden. Geological survey of Sweden, just for short introduction, was formed in 1858 in order to uh, map the geology of Sweden. Uh, we're still not finished, so we still have the task left. But one of the important tasks we have is actually to support the industry and uh, develop uh, applications and geology for the industry. So that's why we are in this type of project. Uh, shortly, uh, for exploration and ore model, uh, there are a number of things here from the scanner that is of interest. First of all is element analysis. Uh, secondly is the tomography. Uh, in the tomography, you can get the rock type lithology. We also get where the mineralization is. That is what uh, we will talk about as ore for the companies. Uh, or we can determine if it's ore. Uh, it means that it has to have a certain uh, concentration of uh, ore forming elements like uh, zinc, copper, lead, uh, gold, whatever. Uh, another part which is uh, extremely useful for us is structures, because if we understand the structures in the rock, we can model how the rock behaves, because everything where we mine is not as it was formed, because it's uh, the mines we're dealing with, they are, it has a formation from, say, 60, 70 million years ago up to almost 2 billion years ago. So a lot of things has happened with rock. Uh, then we do have the density, which is uh, also an, an extremely important uh, indicator of uh, the contents of the rock, as well as the properties of the rock. Uh, and at the end, it's the resource estimation that we are after. The workflow that we had is that we had, first we need to know what is inside, what the, the rock contains, because what type of minerals, it, it affects the measurement. So that leads to a mineral list, uh, which is done input into the scanning. And then we may make a cross check in this, in this uh, work that we're doing here uh, together with everyone else. And then after that, the model building can start. The data, as Mika has shown, gives us a 3D structure of the core, which we see here on the left, but it also, in this case, we can see where the actual ore is located. In this case, it's copper ore from Cyprus, or it will become ore the day it will be extracted. So this is from our exploration test site. Uh, and we can see clearly the differences here is that here we have rock, but there is no ore forming minerals, but when it turns into jello or reddish. This is where we do have the ore for minerals. And for this piece of rock, the uh, scanner yields 0.6% copper, which is for 
this site rather very good value. We further see that there is some zinc, there is molybdenum and selenium. The molybdenum and selenium, they are trace metals which can be used in order to find these type of uh, deposits too. Uh, the question is, uh, do we get out of the scanner similar results as we get out of other type of uh, methods? The, the standard method is to say the data is that it's, uh, the rock is being crushed, it's destructive, uh, so it means it cannot, it's not easily reused, uh, you lose all other information but the actual content in that. But this is the standard way. So what you see here on the left is uh, cumulative distribution for selenium. It means that we have all the values, say 10 to 2, is uh, all values of 100 ppm or larger is for, for the dot there. And go to 10 to 1 is that all values that are equal or larger to 10 ppm. And what is seen here is the blue crosses. They're not easily seen, but these are the assays. They follow this line up here. And uh, so this is for a set from 2019. Uh, we have further the green uh, stars. They are for the same set that the scanner has produced. And this was the first test that we made for Cyprus. And, they, and then we have developed the, the mineral list. We have expanded further. So we have a much larger data set that the, that the bold circles uh, show. And uh, what we can, can conclude is that the selenium actually do seem to uh, correlate with the assays. There are difference between these two data sets and that is because it's, the, it is different set of measurements and it also contains measurements, second set that are outside of the uh, deposit. But we also would like to see if they're comparable if we look at, because there are many more measurements in the second data sets, they, they have also been normalized. So uh, what we see in, in both scans is that they are, the resolution is lower at low ppm, so about 10 ppm, and this is what we expect, is that the scanner will not catch up everything there. On the right, we have molybdenum, and we see the same thing, it's just that it's the molybdenum seem to be much more evenly distributed. Uh, how does it work in the field then? Uh, there we see here on the left, we see the uh, area of West Apliki that uh, is uh, one of the two target areas on Cyprus in order to build up the scanner capacity there. And the dotted line shows the actual outline of the ore body. Uh, the orange circles, they are copper that we have found from scanning. All of the small black circles are the size that we have measured. So we see that basically copper full of the ore body, but we do appear to have some copper a bit outside of the ore body. So it could indicate that the ore body is actually extended further. Uh, it's worth meriting uh, further examinations. We also see that the selenium and molybdenum uh, follow similar trends. On the right, we have added strontium, which uh, we're not quite sure if this uh, should be considered as a strong trace element, but uh, it appears to be concentrated inside or in the vicinity of the ore body. Looking at the assaying in more detail, this is uh, an example from Azarel, is that we if you concentrate on the second column, which is the copper, so there are two sets of measurements there. There is uh, one which is the powder XRF, which is the standard uh, method for determining the content of the core at SRL, and the second is GX10. And what we see is that we have, for most of the part, a rather good correlation. Uh, so you have five minutes left, Ronald. Yep. Uh, on the right, the far right, we have gold, which uh, is uh, has been analyzed, and we do compare that with the 
3D modeling, because we want to know if we in indirect loads we can find the gold. And we see that veins correlate rather well with the gold occurrences too. Uh, further, the uh, going to Greece is that we see that the from uh, looking at where we do have the ore forming elements that uh, lead and zinc is that we do find them here within eight drill holes and they are also utilized in order to build the ore model. We can see similar pictures here is that we have from the Levisa mine in Greece is that the, uh, the scanned is the orange and then we do have in blue the uh, assay of zinc in this case. Uh, comparison this with the density here that we see up on the right here, we see we have four columns, zinc, lead, silver, and density. So we see that the density correlate very well with the occurrence of the ore forming minerals. Can it be used to determine the rock type, the lithography? Yes, here we see four different uh, uh, rock types from, from Cyprus and my colleague Edina Bakker has visualized this very nicely, so that can be used for logging directly. Here is another example from Stefan Lut from Greece, is that uh, we can see that on the top left that we see uh, nice granite in, embedded with uh, uh, carbonite by schists on the bottom. We can find that we do have marble. We also find the mineralized parts, which are in the dark blue and red gel. Uh, from the tomography also is that we get the density. So we can see that the, as we said, the density correlates. If we look at the first top left, we have the lead, is that it correlates with rock type as well, which are the different colors, as well as the mineral mineralization where the lead occurs. Uh, second on the right is the sink, showing similar properties. Uh, I also would like to add this is a, produced by the colleagues uh, at uh, Mavris Petrus, uh, Sofia Kalabaleki, Tim Baker, and Pan, Panos uh, Daudis. Further, uh, the, that we can see the structures inside the rock is that we can use them to cross check. Can these really be used? So we did this test at La Visa, where we on the right, we see a lower hemisphere of measurements on the surface, in the independent drill core on the left with the drill cores. What we can see is that it's on this lower stereographic projections, the striking resemblance. So yes, it appears that this is indeed useful. Uh, Finally here, can we use the density for resource estimation? And, the, and it appears to be very interesting in this case. This is uh, the Greek colleagues have produced this picture from their eight drill cores. So with a large number of drill cores, one can utilize this to build a more exact model. So instead of using the average density, you they have a variation that is actually up to 50% from the average density, which gives them much better indication of the amount of ore inside the body. Thank you. Excellent. Perfectly on time, Ronald. Thank you for that. Um, we leave questions for later. Um, so now can we have Pekka Gilpelainen from VTT? Yes. Wait a second. Welcome to start your presentation. And I let you know when you have the presentation up and running. I can see. Yep. Excellent. Welcome. Okay. Thank you. OK. Um, let's go to this sensor evalu evaluation and integration. So this is one uh, part of the project to get x sensors working the sensor appli sorting application. So first I will show you what are our steps, how we, we have approached this, and then 
about our research platforms and sensors and uh, sorting algorithm develop, development. And uh, I've selected some highlights and finally discussion and conclusions. Okay. Uh, as you, you have seen, uh, Aquacam has developed several uh, sensors and uh, also Ant Micro has uh, developed a 3D camera. And uh, uh, Orex Explorer has developed XRF technology. And at VTT, we have uh, used these for sorting application. And uh, first thing is to we build a prototype number one, which was a sensor test platform at VTT. And we could include, include these sensors first time together in this setup. And uh, the following setups has been done in COMEX laboratory in Poland. And this XRT camera uh, has been evolved from 70 millimeter to 210 and finally to 420 millimeter version. And also we have developed the uh, software and algorithm algorithms during the project. So we have increased the complexity of the, of the system step by step. And the final goal is uh, implement this to mobile sorters. So here are our platforms. This sensor test platform is at Oulu. We call this garage. It's a big box fit with uh, lead shielding, and uh, we can do all kinds of tests there. And the uh, second setup we have used is this uh, COMEX sorting facility that uh, is in Ketty, Poland. And it's a uh, full sorting equipment, and we have modified, modified it so that it can be used in XMind project. And here are the sensors. XRT. First one is 70 millimeter sensor, then 210 millimeter sensor that is uh, installed to COMEX facility, and finally the 420 millimeter sensor that uh, provides high speed so that it can be used in a real sorting application. And 3D camera is installed in the VTT's lab. Here it is in this uh, box, wooden box, because there is uh, lead shielding for radiation. And here is, you can see it installed in the COMEX facility in Poland. And uh, here are the XRF sensors. Uh, uh, XRF development has mostly focused on drill core scanning, but we have also tested the first prototype that uh, Ore Explorer built uh, at VTT's lab at Oulu. And we have also done tests with the XRF spectrometer from AmpTech. And this has been as a, used as a reference device. So it, it has not been included in the actual sorting application. And here you can see the uh, sensor test platform in a more detail. So uh, with this setup, we have uh, several X-ray sources, and we can change the X-ray source as needed. And also we can modify the locations of the sensors and install different sensors. So currently we have a 70 millimeter XRT and 3D sensor installed, and we can also put a AmpTech XRF sensor, and we have all the computer hardware. And the main benefit of this set, setup uh, compared to the belt, belt type is that uh, we can place samples on a tray and move these, and uh, samples don't drop at the end of the uh, line as in the belt, so we can repeat this uh, test run 
several times with different parameters. So that that eases that makes easy to find correct camera settings and compare different settings. And uh, we can do static and dy dynamic measurements with this. So in this project, we have uh, tested the individual sensors and uh, you, we have all kinds of uh, reference targets so that we can measure uh, resolution and uh, we have uh, different metal samples like these uh, metal aluminium samples with uh, known dimensions and the steps and uh, we have also mm, measured different uh, samples from the mines and this has been useful especially for finding the optimal settings for, for the cameras. Then at COMEX sorting facility, um, this is a full scale, full scale sorter there and all, all the conveyor belts and things like that are there present. So sensor set up, setup first consist, consisted of a of the baseline sensors that, uh, that COMEX normally used and then we have upgraded this so that we install a 210 millimeter XRT sensor and in the final phase we installed this uh, 420 millimeter sensor and uh, first we use this system to get uh, reference data with the baseline sensors and uh, then when we install the XRT sensor by Advocam uh, we collected data to a file and this was very useful in algorithm development. And finally, we have proceeded to the sorting trials. And uh, one of the main uh, things in this uh, work packages has been this algorithm development and uh, also software development. So first we received samples from the mines and uh, mineral content of these samples uh, was measured with the drill core scanner by our explorer in Sweden. So we call these uh, samples as the golden samples because we know how, what, what is the mineral con content of these. And with these uh, samples we make measurements at Getty lab at COMEX and uh, collected data to a file and this was used for offline algorithm development and um, these um, tests indicate that uh, we could get very good performance with the uh, sink and lead aura but uh, copper ore was still really challenging and we must work with that a little bit more and do some tests more. You have about six minutes to go, Pekka. Okay. So then uh, at the VTT lab, we first demonstrated this uh, online version of this algorithm. So we have a 3D camera and XRT camera and we placed samples on a on a tray and we could um, um, classify these as a waste or or in real time and we have uh, two different algorithms developed and the uh, second one with uh, both XRT and 3D was, was better. And the next thing was to scale up this system up to a full scale sorter. So the challenge is uh, that in the real sorter, the belt speed is 1.5 meters per second. So it's 10 times faster than in our lab setup. And also the XRT detector is six times bigger. 
So it produces about 60 times more data. So we really need high performance computers and synchronization is also important thing. So we have uh, three different computers in this system, Data Fusion PC, XRT3 processing PC, and the COMEX sorter controller. And of course, there is a computer inside the 3D sensor. And these are connected with Ethernet, and we use uh, 10, mega, 10 gigabit Ethernet, because data rates are so high. And the COMEX sorter system, it gives a triggering pulse, so we can get these uh, cameras synchronized. And then pre-processing PC, rich XRT images and uh, 3D sensor sends the 3D image to the data fusion. And data fusion does the classification and sends uh, information about the rejected, ob rejected objects to the COMEX sorter control computer that uh, controls the pneumatic nozzles. And uh, now we are in the final phase of de development. So here are our setup. Compu XRT sensor, XRT pre-processing software that receives the data via six USB three channels and sends this to data fusion software. And XRT sends is directly connected to the data fusion and this uh, software runs in a uh, PC workstation and this is this is one this system is now under final testing at COMEX lab. So the main highlights of this uh, work package is that we have uh, this sensor test platform built and it's operational at VTT and it's used in sensor and algorithm testing. And the second highlight is that we have uh, algorithm develop development and verification. We have demonstrated both offline and online versions with the XRT and 3D and used uh, real samples from the mines. And the third highlight is that we have now XMI sensors installed and the computing platform and fusion software are operational, uh, operational at COMEX sorting facility. And uh, here are the final conclusions and uh, like summary of this work package. So development work has been done in phases and in this case it has been really good we, we have we have been able to start from the simple simple system and and uh, and scale it up step by step and started also working with the sensor at the very early phase of the development and uh, in the real sorting application um, the new XRT camera provides very high resolution, but also works in a high speed. And combined with 3D sensor, it, it seems a feasible solution for sorting. And uh, also, we need a very efficient computing system and platform, and uh, we have uh, managed this by utilizing uh, parallel computing and high-speed Ethernet connections. And about the algorithm, copper ore is uh, challenging, but uh, with sim latent sync performance is very good. And uh, we have still some work with getting the real sorting application fully fully functional, but it's it's progressing and we are not far from that. 
And uh, of course, this COVID situation has co caused some uh, problems because we have uh, distributed the work around several countries. But uh, anyway, we have been able to adapt to situation and use the remote connections and telecoms and, uh, and uh, work has not, has, has, uh, has not stopped and has progressed. And uh, big thanks to everybody has, that has been working with this uh, sorting application. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Thank you very much, Pekka. Uh, good presentation. Uh, we have to save questions for later. So in the meanwhile, can Jacek Kolasz from COMEX prepare his presentation? And while you're doing that, I remind people that you're welcome to ask questions in the chat. Some questions will be answered already in the chat and some will be collected for the later summary and discussion. Now I can see Jacek is gearing up here. I can see your desktop at the moment. Yes, hello, good morning. Uh, good morning to everyone. I hope you can you can see yeah. you can see the presentation. Exactly, and now you're in presentation mode and we hear you well. Welcome. Okay. Yale. Thank you very much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm glad to to, to to combine all the presentations more or less because uh, what we heard so far the the sense of development is uh, has been applied in the final sorting uh, solutions uh, to 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 try it in the real scale in the production scale uh, just before i i move forward uh, i just uh, want to show the very quick presentation of comex uh, comex has been established in 2003 in norway and then in 2007 in poland as a separate company uh, comex polska and I'm the CEO of the company and the founder of both companies. Uh, before we talk uh, about sorting, I would like to show you the, the, the short uh, movie presenting the principle of operation. And uh, this is the principle of uh, sorting. Basically, it's a monolayer sorting where we have different sensors applied on the uh, transport belt. We can use different additional sensors uh, like cameras, like uh, XRF sensors and other types uh, to combine in the operation. Then we have the rejecting nozzles, chromatic nozzles to reject the material we want to concentrate. This is the principle. Yes, so you know, Jacek, uh, your voice was lost in the music occasionally, so everything you said wasn't complete, but I think we got a grip of the from the video. Thank you. OK, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, OK, so that's uh, uh, this is basically the operating principle again, uh, the, the vibrating feeder, the horizontal bud with uh, uh, X-ray sensors and then additional sensors like cameras and XRF 
units. Uh, uh, we have everything installed on the same belt. Here we have the rejecting mechanism. This is the picture of the sensor uh, of the sorter uh, ready for production, ready for application. Uh, here we can see the other sensors, which uh, other sorters, which we can also apply in in different scale. Uh, here is the, uh, the, the the laboratory unit, which uh, where we can have a small capacity uh, testing uh, for individual particles or for research purposes. This is the production unit with one meter belt. This is another unit uh, for two meters belt application. And uh, we have even three meters belt uh, with uh, for 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 final uh, uh, industry applications. So different sizes for different capacities. Here is the application example where we have the, the preparation of the material and the sorter is inside these containers. Uh, here is the uh, picture from the movie. It's a uh, it's a Lovisa group one. Uh, I will talk a bit more about it it's inside the container. What is uh, uh, actually the crucial part uh, in, in the, within the project work is the combination of sensors. So it has been already mentioned that we had three types of sensors. Uh, we had um, a high resolution camera developed by Advacam. We had a, a 3D camera developed by Antmicro. And uh, we have the 3D, uh, we had the XRF, uh, collimated XRF sensor um, developed by Orex Pro. And all these sensors are combined together in the same uh, sorting unit. Basically, the very challenging part is the is the uh, is the high resolution camera because it gives the, the about 50 microns resolution. So uh, as we normally have about 0 0.4 0 0.5 millimeter resolution in the in the standard X-ray sensors, it means 10 times more, and in in reality, it means 100 times more regarding the data flow. So it's a very challenging. It has been already mentioned that the data flow is much higher. So we have to combine all this information, filter it, and provide the the, the final conclusion for within milliseconds because we have very short time for reacting. So all this is very challenging, and th that's why we are using a. Uh, sophisticated teraflop uh, uh, computers uh, to providing the enough ca calculation capacity for for managing the, the the capacity actually and the velocity of the belt here is the example of the of the research facility in poland uh, where we have all the necessary equipment for verifying the technology here we have the traditional dual energy sensors which are used normally as a standard in the industry in sorting here we have the multi-energy. It's another type of sensor. It's also used by, by, by us for, for some applications. But here we, in the red uh, squares, we have the x mine sensors. That means high resolution uh, multi-energy um, uh, sensors. Uh, we have uh, also the RGB cameras and the 3D camera from, from uh, x mine. Uh, we have the infrared multi uh, multi spectral uh, cameras, and finally we have the infrared hyperspectral cameras as well. Uh, and uh, at the end, uh, collimated XRF. It's dashed line. It's still under construction, so we hope to have it soon installed in our lab. What is the uh, main advantage of the setup is the immediate verification and comparison between all the sensing technologies uh, on the same unit. So we, we, we can circulate the material because it's a return belt. We can circulate material during sorting and analyzing. And we are able to compare directly the performance of the sensors and accuracy of the identification. So you have about six minutes to go, Jacek. Okay, thank you. Here is the example of the other part of the other side of the sorter where we can uh, uh, exactly adjust the parameters we want to uh, we want to use for sorting for identification and uh, so we can see the physical effect immediately during during the process. Here we see the the uh, the um, uh, separation example using the dual energy sensors which are as a standard uh, used in the industry today. Uh, here is the example of uh, zinc and lead ore uh, with the standard resolution means 0 0.4 millimeters. Um, the squares are marking the particles of interest. The, the, the ones without squares are the waste material, low density. Uh, but in any case, I just wanted to show you that this is the, the certain resolution. So we don't see actually the very tiny spots and very small concentrations inside these waste particles because of the sensor limits of the, of the sensing limits. So the main part of the x mine sensor was this camera, which was already presented by Advacom, which allows the very high resolution pictures. And here we see the 
the first resolution, uh, the, the, the first uh, application where we have tried to, uh, to uh, separate uh, copper ore uh, using this uh, high resolution cameras. Um, on the left, we see the, the, the particles, uh, the, the, the pieces of, of rocks which are not containing uh, uh, copper or uh, heavy minerals. Uh, we see the very gray background and on the right side we see the concentrations of, of some intrusions of copper. So, so this is possible to do uh, to identify by 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 X mine uh, camera. It's it's not possible by a standard sensor. Standard sensors will show the similar effect in, on both uh, images. Another example already shown, but here is a exact comparison between the traditional dual energy detector on the same rock. And here the same rock uh, analyzed by this uh, high resolution uh, XRT camera. So, so uh, we see everything inside. We see the concentrations of very tiny spots and inclusions. Uh, we also are able to identify different materials on this uh, blue color, yellow and red are representing different densities. So in this case, there is a mercure uh, contamination in the in the iron, uh, iron uh, rock. So it's very advanced results. Another example is the small inclusions of uh, uh, of uh, very heavy uh, minerals in, in in the rocks, which are which were in the traditional sensors not visible. Again, the, the different characteristics of different spots uh, based on the X-ray attenuation and uh, the the possibility of identifying the tiny inclusions gives us the. Uh, the, the option for sorting the material with, uh, for example, contamination like mercury in this case, or it can be, for example, gold ore or copper ore in case we have a small uh, inclusions below 100 microns, which are not identified by traditional sensors. Uh, and finally, I have uh, results uh, we have seen and we always also see the results from different mines, but uh, here is the set of results which we obtained from different uh, uh, com concentrations of copper, uh, different trials uh, for, for different concentrations of copper ore. In this case, we had a sorting, uh, we had a sample of uh, containing 1.35% uh, of copper. And we have made different uh, scans and different uh, separation uh, tests. Uh, we have obtained different uh, fractions uh, with, with um, various concentrations of waste and product. And uh, you, maybe it's a bit too, too much to see, but anyway, I, I would like to, to concentrate on the, on the waste fraction. In the waste fraction, we see very low concentration of copper and various concentrations of in the in the product fraction. So at the end, if you take the average fraction, it's 0.011% uh, of copper and almost 2% of copper in the product. So extremely good separation. Uh, it's very important that we don't lose too much material inside this fraction, waste fraction, because uh, this is uh, this means directly the loss of metal uh, at the plant. Uh, regarding the yield, this uh, is uh, extremely good uh, uh, split. It's uh, one third of the of the fraction is removed as a waste, and we are recovering 99.7 in this case, which is absolutely perfect. If we even achieve something in the industry close to 95 percent, 96 percent is 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 really good. It's a really good result. So for the project work, we know that the 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 the, the current uh, dual energy sensors, the standard sensors, can be used for some ores, but they 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 result in the in the little bit lower recovery compared to the X mine sensors, and that's why we hope that applying the X mine sensors, we can increase the recovery of metal, and also allow the waste fraction purification because we 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 see a lot of application possibilities where where the mines have uh, rocks uh, with uh, contaminated uh, contaminated rocks which could be applied, for example, in, in constructions or building industry. Uh, and and uh, they cannot be used because of the content of heavy metals, for example. So so this is an option for 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 doing it as well. And uh, of course, for the very disseminated ore treatment like uh, copper, um, gold, and uh, other minerals with small concentrations, uh, rare, rare earths, uh, to, not to, to limit it to, to this only. Uh, this can be absolutely done by 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 application of the X mine sensors. Okay, that was all for my side. Thank you very much for your attention. Mm. Thank you very much, Jacek. Uh, a shame we couldn't hear you while you did the narrative for that movie, but <laughs> I think we understood it very good. Uh, I have a question for you from from the audience here, and the first question is: 
what is the average throughput on a one, two or three meter belt bandwidth or belt width? Well, the throughput depends very much on the particle size. Um, uh, it's, it's a kind of rule of thumb uh, where, where we have the particle sizes in millimeters. It means more or less the, 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 the upper limit for tons per hour. So if we are treating particles like 100 millimeters in size, from on the one meter belt, we have uh, 100 tons an hour, uh, more or less. Uh, on the two meter belt, it's double. Three meter belt is triple. It's it's uh, just direct calculation, but uh, very much depends on the particle size. So if we go, for example, to 10 millimeters, uh, it means 10 tons per hour. So it's it's a big difference when when we treat si different sizes. So obviously we we try to have optimal size uh, choice, and this choice is basically between 20 and 80 millimeters. So we have a good liberation, but also good capacity for mining industry. Mm, very good. And can you tell us about the the needed conditions of the material uh, when it comes to humidity and things like that, and the fine fractions? Well, basically, we don't like fine fractions inside the material at the, at the, at the belt, but uh, but uh, we have applications where we have even uh, treatment of uh, of ores uh, with uh, with a contaminating uh, contaminated uh, fine fraction. So because of uh, inability of removing it, so so we have uh, applications where it is also possible. But unfortunately, fine fraction takes space on the belt. It also gives us a signal uh, contamination, I would say is a noise in the signal from the detector, so it's not recommended to have it. So basically we don't like the fine fraction below, let's say 10 millimeters, uh, but we can also treat it so it's, it's if, if absolutely necessary. Uh, but the, the main principle is that we operate with a ratio of three to four maximum. That means the bottom size to the top size must be not more than three. So like 10 to 30, 20 to 60 and so on. So this is a this is the regarding the size, uh, regarding the humidity or other parameters. It is uh, uh, absolutely very robust system. So it doesn't matter. Uh, we can have a high moisture content, low moisture content. It can be dry. It can be dirty. If it's not only contain, uh, containing a, a foreign material on the surface, it's it's, uh, it's it can be treated and it can be analyzed properly so because we are analyzing the volume uh, of the of the material and not the surface only. Yeah, very good. Thank you, Jacek. Um, we have a number of questions now, uh, so let's start with Mikael. Your presentation. We have a number of questions there. Um, are you ready? And I'll read out here. Um, one question is, um, how is the combination done of your chemical data from XRF and tomography structure data? Um, can you confirm that it's two sources that are combined? So who was uh, asking this? I, I might have missed this. I tried to, to write down answers in, in a yes, text. Yes, please, line. but can you please give a verbal, verbal answer as well, so everybody might not have read the, the chat. No, so. no. Oh, oh yeah, I'm, I'm just curious that I missed the question. So I, I thought I had gotten all of them down so that mm. we documented yeah. for further. So anyway, it is uh, a combination of of uh, we measure the weight and we measure and we measure uh, X-ray fluorescence and uh, the transmission of X-rays going through the core. But from those transmission images, uh, we rotate the sample and while rotating we are taking these images like 600 of them per per revolution and then we reconstruct a three-dimensional model of it so and that model is then combined with the with the fluorescent data and the uh, the uh, mass measurement so we get get uh, a calculation of the elements mm -hmm. Thank you. And another question for you is about calibration. How do you or do you need to calibrate the system for each site separately? Oh yeah, that, that one I saw from Mano Mentari. And uh, no, we don't need to calibrate the system, but when the system is used by uh, the geologist in an iterative way, uh, building up a better and better understanding of the geology at his or her site, this information is in turn fed back into the model of the geology used in the system, and this gives more precise results by rerunning the calculations. And in this way, the model becomes more accurate, and this is also then um, the model that will be the model of the ore that uh, that is uh, used in the ore modeling 3D system or 4D system that is used. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you. And another question regarding density. What about the precision and is it inferred or estimated? So we measured density and the density is now a days. Uh, on the screenshots you saw here, I didn't show the uh, the error bars on the uh, the density, but we have error bars on them in the latest version of the software. So for each site that you have run this on and, and scanned, you will see errors and I, we can get back to that before the day is over to see from some typical data what the error bars for the density measurement is. And it's a bulk measurement of density. And then you can also get inferred density variations underneath, I mean over the, the, the length of the meter that that is the normal sample length, but what we measure is over one meter or or that sample length and then uh, uh, that is by done with uh, calculations of the errors mm -hmm. and one more for you Mikael how deep is the penetration into the rock with the 130 kilovolt energy yes yeah, so that's um, that's um, how deep does it penetrate? Yeah, that was also Mano Mantari. It was. It goes straight through most rocks, and uh, but of course, as you understand, uh, lead is what we are using to protect the people working with the machine from uh, from the X-rays. So enough of, for instance, lead will of course block all the radiation, and that is true for all X-ray based systems. But but the, the transmission. For most of the of the rocks, it goes straight through, and that is uh, how we can build up these 3D models. Mm. Okay, thank you. Then there was one question directed to to Ronald uh, on your presentation, and part of it maybe hands over to Mikael, but I leave it to you first, Ronald. The question was regarding uh, <clears throat> resolution and detection limit of for the gold measurements that you were referring to. And yes, Ronald. Yeah, we didn't. Uh detect the gold in the scanner. It was uh, a test for to see if we could uh, explore for gold indirectly. So we used the, drill, the tomographer from the drill core. Uh, so Edward Lynch, my colleague, and uh, Desislav Ivanov, they uh, uh, derived the veins from the number of veins. And it, so it's basically a density of veins uh, mineral bearing veins that was uh, plotted against the assay of gold by conventional uh, technology. We can also use silver uh, in those cases that silver is occurring and with the new development of the soft x-ray scanner we can also use uh, cross-check for uh, when we have silica in, in the as well as sulfur that correlates. So we have a strong uh, set of values in order to uh, to explore. Mm -hmm. and I might I might chip in there. I, I yes. noted this this question as well. And uh, so I think it's Rafael Mario Blondin from Agnico Eagle who is asking this. And um, uh, this is uh, uh, if if you have a site with nuggety gold. So I think you're alluding to this because uh, um, you, you say resolution and detection limit for the gold measurement from XCT modeling. So that that implies um, the uh, maybe a site with nuggety gold, and that is possible to by the particle detection, the particle accounting and size um, determining functionality in the machine. We can count the particles and. Uh, we have modules for that. So if you know the size distribution of your par gold particles in your site, you can estimate the grade. Mm -hmm. Thank you for those answers. And you are audience, you're still welcome to add questions there. I have one question for Pekka and maybe also Mikael and Ronald. And that is, I mean, you all have explained a lot of very extreme high tech details here uh, and all of this has to come together and you all have more or less indicated there has been technical problems throughout the program through the project and and Pekka how do you see it you've been using a lot of equipment from different providers here how has it worked 
or how has the project managed to collaborate when we have to change plans, when we have to adopt to change circumstances? Pekka. Yes, good question. Well, in this project, there, there have been so many money, many changes and uh, uh, delays, and of course, this uh, COVID, COVID system. But uh, somehow we have managed managed to do this, and uh, of course, there is a limit that we have a end date and. Uh, we didn't do everything by time. So mm. if we had been a little bit <laughs> faster, or we could have uh, get this <laughs> sorting uh, really working. <laughs> mm. It's been challenging for all partners. I know that. Mm. Ronald, you've been in contact with, with all the mines, uh, and your team has been out meeting all mines. Um, what do you think about the collaboration within the project? Uh, I think this has been maybe the most exciting part because uh, it was completely a blank page when we started because most people didn't know each other. And uh, I'm stricken by the professionality that the mines have shown and uh, how well it has turned out, uh, the communication and exchange of information and primarily the collaboration. So I would like to thank the mines for uh, responding so well to us. And uh, of course, the learning curve for us all, because we have different uh, cultures behind us. We, we are an authority supporting industry, we're not the industry. And we have a development company as ore that uh, we also work very tightly with. And uh, yeah, fantastic ride, I would say. Mm. Very good, thank you. Uh, we have a few more minutes before we have to end this session. Uh, does anyone else have a question or a remark? Any of the speakers or Janne? Something you'd like to add or bring up? Well, if, if possible, I would like to have a comment uh, regarding the, the issues you just discussed, uh, is that uh, this project was extremely ambitious regarding the development of the sorting technology. So if we if we look at that really, uh, at the real uh, progress we did in the in the project work, and if we look at the, what the what the technology is used today in sorting on uh, by, by sorting companies uh, by by companies providing sorting equipment, it, it's it's really extremely ambitious because it's been developed from the from the from the blank uh, uh, actually uh, arc, and 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 this 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 uh, this created a. A huge progress right now. Uh, we, we have a lot of experience. We know the the way how to finish it, uh, how to apply it in the industrial scale, and uh, and before the project, it was really very big unknown. So so we have to really stress it that it's uh, it's a uh, it's very very ambitious target. Mm. Yeah, very good. Uh, very early in the amongst the presentation, someone asked how much of what we see is actually X-Mine products or X-Mine development. Mikael. So, yeah, I, I I went into a little bit of it during my presentation of, of the drill core analyzer, but uh, there are lots of features. And uh, one is the, that we, we very early in the project, almost immediately, we changed uh, because of the feedback, we changed to a higher power of the X-ray source that we are using in the machine. We changed also to a source with a shorter focal point distance so that we could get a better um, uh, resolution and uh, a better um, uh, geometrical factor for um, for uh, um, and, uh, zooming in or enlarging the, the image. And then uh, we have developed better anti-scatter collimation devices and uh, the manufacturing methodology for that together with uh, with uh, a very state-of-the-art advanced uh, uh, tungsten uh, 3d printing company in in uh, holland we have produced a density measurement procedures and also the the, the presenting of that and further development of structural annotation the low energy module um, 
at, which also led to a, a newly development of uh, sample holders of carbon fiber tubes or carbon fiber instead of the plastic we were using before, but because we needed larger openings of the carbon fiber tube of these yeah, tubes. I too. have to I have to stop you there, Mika. Yeah. I know your <laughs> list is probably a hundred points long. <laughs> yeah, but this is just and yeah. then yes, we said. Uh, Mikael, I have to interrupt. There's one thing I would like to add. Uh, being myself, most of my professional life, uh, scientific programmer, what I've been stricken by is actually the enormous development of software within this project is as yeah. huge as the technological development. Yeah. And this is not an easy thing that's been done. So I would like to say this is an enormous, fantastic development by all of the technological providers. Congratulations. Yeah. Thanks. I think Thanks. that was a very good closing word for, for this session. Um, if I hand over to Jan and you can give the details of the continuation of the day now, because now we are going into a lunch break. So thank you very much to all the presenters in the morning and thank you for all the questions you have and you're still welcome to add questions through the chat and we'll address them later today. So Janne. Uh, yes, um, I would also like to thank all the speakers uh, for excellent presentations and uh, all the attendees for joining this uh, first session of the of the final event. So that, this is the end of uh, session one and uh, session two will start at uh, 1 p.m. CET. And uh, as uh, Stefan said, uh, you are still uh, during the break. Also welcome to uh, place more, more questions and you can uh, stay in the meeting if you, if you like. And uh, especially for the presenters, if you can stay in the meeting, that would be good uh, from the uh, point of view of uh, organizing things. Um, so we will have now the lunch break and uh, let's get back to this final event at 1 p.m. CET. Thank you and see you. Thank you. See you all later. Bye -bye. Thank you.